video on um, farm accounts and in the first video we did the setup and the setup is critical so we you need to look at that video first before we get into the second step which is transactions so when I come into transactions you can see at the top here I have there's four tabs there's bill purchases invoice sales payments and receipts and special transactions uh, bills is for when you get a bill from your main co-op. Remember we talked about the businesses that we track on bills and invoices. So when you get a bill in the door, you put it into bills purchases. So let's put in a bill here. So I go into bills purchases and I go new at the bottom. And let's say that on the um, first of the ninth, we get a bill from... Notice the way that we just have the two companies that we decided to track on a... Um, bills and invoice basis. So let's say local merchant. The reference would be the reference from the merchant. So if, if you've got their bill, you could you could type in their reference if you want. But you don't have to do it, so we'll take it out. You don't have to type in comments at all. It's just a loose box where you can type in unusual comments that you want to put in. But normally you don't need to fill anything in there at all. The, the main thing would be new item at the bottom. So if I come into new item, if I drop this menu down, Notice the way these are all the expense items that we talked about in the first video. So it makes sense to have these cleaned up before we start. So let's say that we have feed. And in here, you can type in a description. You could type in the type of feed, for example, if you want. It is possible to track um, quantities and units. So you can track the tonnage of feed if you think that that would be relevant. And that's all back in setup. We can have a look at that later maybe to see how you would turn that on. If I come into amount, I'd say that it's um, 600 euro for feed. Now notice here that there's no enterprise split but we talked about in the first video about having the default enterprise splits in uh, before we start putting in transactions. So if I click in here on the fly we can say that this is 100% dairy but if we'd gone to the trouble of putting in the default enterprise splits in the setup then the computer would already have known that feed concentrate was 100% dairy. Now I can do another new item and uh, so you, you could get a bill from your merchant and it could be for a variety of things. So let's say in this case it's feed and fertilizer. So with fertilizer let's say it's 800 euro and you can come in here and again if you have your enterprises split properly they'll already be filled out for you. So I go finish. Again if you only have one enterprise on your farm you won't care about these enterprise splits at all. So let's say that that's the bill that I got in the door from the local merchant and that came in on the 1st of um, September and I just want to save that. The screen clears and it's waiting for you to put in a another um, transaction from a different merchant on a different date. So we have no more bills to put in. And notice the note we have a bill now, but notice the way that the bill is in here as unpaid. And we notice that the total amount of the bill is 1400 so that's the amount that is owed to that merchant based on the bill that came in on that date. If I go into um, invoices, uh, once you track a company and bills and invoices, everything with that company has to be done with bills and invoices. And you might say, well, when would I need invoices? And in your typical dairy situation, it would be on your milk check. So let's say I go new here. And I'm just going to do, in this example, I'm doing the 2009 account. So let's say that on the 31st of the 12th, 2008, I'll just show you what this is in a minute. I'm going to put in a I'm going to raise an invoice to Glenbia on the 31st, 12th, 2008, and you'll see later on why I'm doing that. We don't need a reference number in this case. We wouldn't need a comment unless it was a very unusual comment you wanted to record. So if I come in here and I go new, and I'll say that um, this is for milk sales, and the milk is, see the way in milk the quantity is turned on, so I can say that it was for, um, say, 6,000 liter or kilograms. You can change that if you want. You can change the um, default units in the setup section. And let's say there's 6,000 liters. Now, don't get my maths wrong, but n not to worry about prices and stuff. Let's say that it's 1,500 euro. Um, now, the one thing that this is a little trick that we need to be aware of. Um, if if your milk was worth 15 hundred you actually never get fifteen hundred for it because there's always some expenses taken out and this is what the complex button up here is for if I put a tick in complex I'm basically telling the computer that I want a list of incomes and expenses in the same transaction so if I go new item here and I drop this down and you see the way I have all the incomes at the top 
But as I scroll down, I suddenly get into the expenses. And I should have a levy. See this one here? There's an expense called levies and transport. Unless I come over here and I say that 120 euro. Effectively, what I'm doing here is I'm saying that um, the milk that I supplied in December of 2008 was worth 1500 because that was the gross value of my milk. But there was deductions of 20 euro. Now that looks a bit low, but let's say it's 80 euro. So um, the amount I got into my hand up here is 1200 1420 that's the correct way to put in a milk check because it's good it's nice to know that the gross value of your milk was 1500 at the end of the year when you look at your, the gross value of your milk it really should be the gross value of the milk before any deductions were taken for haulage or levies or bovia or anything like that and this is the correct correct way to do it notice the way i have an income the milk is an income the levies are in expenses and the way to get incomes and expenses to come up at the same time is to put a tick in this button complex. Now we use the word complex for want of a better word but if you click on the complex tip it tells you put a tick here if you want to include an expense item in this invoice. So that's the, the, the probably a tricky type of um, um, invoice because you're putting an income and expense all in the same place. In most normal, well I wouldn't use the word normal, but in most non-farm businesses it's very rare to have income and, in, incomes and expenses happening at the same time. Uh, in most businesses, you know, they sell a product, they, get, they raise an invoice to get money in. Uh, farming is um, almost special in that way that you can have, you have two things happening at the same time, especially with the milk, that you have um, there's, you're making money but you're spending money off the same transaction. So if I save that, so that's an example of an invoice. And so an invoice is an invoice that you raise on your computer. So your invoice is somebody else's bill. Now obviously in this case you are not going to post an invoice to Plan B at telling them that they owe you 1420 euro. But because we've decided to track Plan B on bills and invoices, we have to do everything with Plan B on a bills and invoices. If we get a bill in, we have to put it in. Before we lodge money from Plan B, we have to raise the invoice. Now, if I 